I swear to God, if you're like sneaking into my dungeon at night time and you're doing shit to me, I'm going to be very, very upset, Mr. Adrian. Or should I call you A for asshole? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer T for tea bag. <laughs> G'day. This is the Two Beards Wrexham podcast, your go to for all things Wrexham AFC. Join us as we chat about the highs and lows of our favourite footy club. She'll be right now. G'day, beard brethren, Sheila's fuckheads, and just all around legends. Welcome to another week of the Two Beards Wrexham podcast. I'm your host, Rousey, that dude over there who teabags me in night time. His name's Adrian. Brought to you by the Sports Social Podcast Network. Adrian, mate, how you doing? Thought you were going to bring it into like um, our new sponsor, Tetley Tea Bags, because we know that the Two Beards boys love a good tea bag, like something like that. I thought that was kind of the vibe we were going for, but no, I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just. We have news for the first time ever, so I'm very excited. I'm not going to not going to blow my load yet, what but the just fuck just is going on. We've been, like, scraping the barrel for content the last couple of weeks, and all of a sudden this week, the biggest things happen. Well, a very, very big thing happened. Um, And loads of other little things happened at the same time. And it all started with a what I like to say is a no news news, um, which was absolutely hilarious. But we will get into that. We will get into that. <laughs> he baits. He baits you in. He thinks you're going straight for the content. He thinks you're going to do it, but he doesn't. No, that's professionalism. But yeah, I like to just, just, just put the tip in and just get it out and be like, "Hey, we go." You know, just, just, just tease just a little bit. I've got a. It's like foreplay, right? This, this whole first thing is like foreplay. We've, we've got to get everyone limbered up, get everyone loose and ready for a good show. And that's what we bring here at the two beers, Rex and podcast is, is good content, good show. And, and a good, loose good asshole. Time. And a loose asshole. Fuck it. Eh? <laughs> All right. Well, did you know, did you know that we actually have a fans only program? Not an what? only fans, not an only fa- well, it should be an only fans, but it's not an only fans, it's a fans only uh program. And um you probably notice we do have ads on our on our podcast or on the audio only, but if you don't want ads and you want early access to the podcast every week, you want access to our Discord, private fans only Discord with us in it. Discount off the merch, giveaways in the Discord, all that sort of jazz, then by all means, join the fuckheads. We've got a lovely bunch of them. Links Fuck, in I'm the gonna description go. down below. Oh, uh, mate. Click the link tree I'm down ready. below and click like and hit subscribe on this episode. He's doing all of it. Doing all of it. He's listing it all, baby. So we shout out our fuckheads every week on this podcast. So. If you want to be part of it, by all means, links will be in the description down below. Please click them, have a look around, even buy some merch. This hoodie is the tits. Uh, or you could just, or you could just yell at us, like <laughs> just do that. That's what some people do in the comments. It's great, um, but we do have a very lovely, 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 lovely set of fuckheads. We have the executive producers. That's right. We have Sarah, Jake, Anthony, Welsh Techie. Or what does he want to be called? Count Derek? I can't remember. Count and Derek then, Diptong Mongoose the Third. I'm glad you remembered it. And uh, Bryant, that's right. I used the T this time because the T is for tea bag. Um, and Dan, <laughs> lovely, lovely man. And we got the rest of our fuckheads. We have Andy, Aaron, Will, Chris, John, Anthony R, uh, Deandra, Mark, and Drew. And I think a little whispers. There may be more to come. Maybe more to come. We shall see. We shall see. But uh, I think I love those guys. It's a great little group. We have a good, good time in the in the uh, in the old Discord. So, um, yeah, I think it's 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 good it's peeps. 
good little community we got going. Good little community. I'm very, we got going. very happy. Uh, shit, can you believe we're coming to, going to Wrexham next year? I genuinely can't believe it. I, mean, I still don't believe it till we're there. That's that's my big thing. Like not not till we're there. I don't want to jinx it. We'll probably mm. be get you know gone missing in like the Bermuda Triangle or some shit. Paranoid. <laughs> just just want to get there. I just want to get there. We go. We're going. We're going. November twenty twenty five. We're going. So, um, I think we're Stuff. really looking forward to it. But um, I, it's so surreal. I mean, even for me to go back home, I think it's just going to be insane. We've been trying to send you home for years, mate. What, what, what I'm just kidding. Doing? I'm just fuck. I'm just fucking with you. Please, I love you. I love you. Don't 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 ever don't ever don't ever take the banter seriously. Ever. Do you ever. imagine love trying you. to if I actually did go back and actually trying to record this shit on a fucking on a long. Am I supposed to take my shit difference? breaks? Yeah, I know. Speaking of shit break, I'm actually going to take one. I'll be two seconds. Fuck! You really tired right on that, the right? podcast? Been to the toilet. I'm going again. <laughs> All right. Well, after this, we will get into our meat and bones of the episode because we actually do have some news coming at you, two beard style. Let's go. Woo! Okie dokie. Welcome back, Adrian. He had a quick splash and dash. Love it. To, my new favorite to... line, by the way. That's yep. just fucking, <laughs> I've never heard of that in my life and I'm using it every I time. Literally, I thought you weren't serious at the start. I thought you were like, nah, I'm, I'm just going to just work my way off just to, but no, you literally went to drop the kids off at the pool. I honestly, it's the porcelain a... devil. Straight had a double quarter pounder before we started. Wolf that down because uh, had a bit of a later start. Pounder, that came right out of you. <laughs> it definitely, definitely pounded me. That's for sure. Wait, you, you took in a double quarter pounder and you let go a pounder. Yeah, that's yeah. just how life is, right? It's a really good analogy for life. Anyways, Wrexham. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you know that monkeys actually throw their shit at you yeah. like, when they're threatened or? or- or angry yeah. and stuff. They actually take a handful of their dookie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought that was common knowledge. I thought that was like the reason for their existence. <laughs> I saw this, I actually saw this video of a monkey that did it and it landed right on this old, old lady's nose. Oh, like, oh, Jesus. Jeez. That's. Well, uh, if you're driving and you've just veered into three unco- oncoming lines of tra- lanes or lines of traffic, regardless, You've killed yourself after that. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. The knowledge well, of that has made you go to it. I'm sorry. Well, okay. Hopefully there's no more interruptions though. And and all the kids are okay. They're swimming in the pool. Yeah. Sweet Jesus. Okay. Sweet. Good. Right. Jesus. So we can get on with the show. Um, what show? Arthur Oconquo. Well, fuck me dead. I thought you were going to miss that stream. I honest, I thought, I can't believe Adrian's going to miss this big moment. Like it, it was a big moment. It was a big moment. But I, I think, I think the club's um, media team need a little bit of fine tuning. <laughs> yeah. The fact that they posted it on Twitter before the actual printer had printed out the HP printer. So for those of you who don't know, they did a little media marketing just spectacle where they did a live of a HP printer because that's one of our sponsors and printed out the fact that Arthur Conquo has re-signed or signed technically for Wrexham. And the basically, I guess you could say they blew their load a little early and the X account or Twitter account, what the fuck you want to call it, official Twitter account, tweeted it before it even finished. <laughs> before it even printed out the printer. <laughs> what? I mean, I laughed because it got made meant that I was on it because I had the Instagram open, but also my computer open with the Twitter feed just so that I could get a post ready to say that, or I wanted to be what, like two beards to be one of the first to kind of say it. And I was like, oh shit, I must be on a lag or delay because th- this Instagram post has not printed what it needs to print. And this post says that he signed so... 
But no, nah, it was good. Honestly, like I think it would if anything, it just made for a bit of a laughable moment. I loved the people who were like, I can't believe we're finally signing Luke Armstrong. Um, that that probably made me giggle very much uh the entire time that the printer was coming out. And then uh, but dude, how good how good is the news about AO? AO oh, is so, the best. So good. I needed a moment to myself after that one. Um I tell you what. Uh, it was so funny. Like I remember I'm, I'm rushing home from a party to get home. I, I all of a sudden saw it's that there was an announcement of a live stream. Um, and I'm like, shit, this is big. The club's never done a live stream before. This is going to be big. I, I thought there's going to be at least like two or three signings. It's going to be like, this is the whole <laughs> reason why they've been, been quiet. You know, they're going to, they're going to release it all on one live stream. But no, I got home. I spent 20 minutes watching a printer. Legit watching a fucking printer. <laughs> and I'm just like, what what has my life become? So I started Mate. I started stirring up some rabble in the chat and just having a bit of fun. And then the countdown happened. And I was like, yes, the countdown's coming. Countdown's coming. Countdown's coming. I'm not coming. The countdown's coming. And then and then it was a countdown to a countdown. I'm like, oh, fucking another countdown. And that countdown went. And then it finally just had another image of a printer. He's just doing blow for blow here, folks. Like, I feel like I am living blow, it. A blow for blow thing of what the fuck went on. And and like, I, I, I just was not stoned enough for this. Nah, fair. And, and then fucking, okay, all right. Then all printed, just like before, as we're sitting there waiting. Chat goes, oh, Arthur's signed. It's been announced on on X. And I'm just like, you're fucking kidding me. How the fuck? I just sat here watching a fucking printer and the club leaked it before the printer did. So, you know what? Little bit of work there. But hey, it was great. And it was good news. I mean, to sign Arthur Conquo, but not just sign him, three years. Three years. That means he's probably going to be with us when we go up to the Premier League, mate. If we, yeah, <laughs> look, if we if we get to the promised land, that that's a that's a nice thought. He'd be there, but but I mean, it even just helps us out as a club. Like it means that people have to pay out his fees if, like, you know, gets to next year, and then all of a sudden he's like the number one hot topic to sign and and we we can actually make some bank off of some players because let's be real we've been shafted in years we've been giving away incredibly good players um because we're moving up the leagues and we've been getting players in return who've either been outstanding or billy waters so it's not really been like you know crash hot financials so it'd be really good to make some money off of off a play because i've got no illusions if a big club like a big Premier League club comes a talking to to a Conquo, I wouldn't be surprised if if uh, the Wrexham says, you know what, do what you got to do, kid, because we need to make some cash. But, yeah, but let's not look that far ahead. To, though, I mean, you, you saw. Do you think you want to? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, come on. He referred to Wrexham as home. You know, he's like, this is our home. Even in the or access all areas, he he said there was there was never any other clubs. It was always going to be Wrexham. He w mm. he wanted Wrexham. He loves the mm. boys. He wants to For get now. back around the team. He just loves the town. He's he's, he's called it. No, nah, it is it is home, but it is like very much the same thing when it comes to football. I mean, the guy's been in the in the Arsenal system. Do you get what I mean? So he's seen what can be achieved. So if a big club like that comes a knocking again with quadruple the figure you cannot tell me the guy's going to be like i'm staying because it's home he's not going to the only way we will is exactly how you put it at the end of three years he's somehow still at the club and we're in the promised land and he doesn't have to worry because we're already on the big bucks do you get what i'm saying mm. so i'm with you i don't want to burst your bubble but i also just want people to you know when people go don't fall in love with lone players well i can get fucked because we just signed arthur O'Connor. Well, they say they say to be to be absolutely the happiest, you need to be on about $75,000 a year, right? To be the absolute happiest. So, like, I, I just wonder, I, I, I just wonder this, like, is it about the money? Like, it, it, at any stage, is it not about the money? It's about the happiness, the lifestyle, 
the love and compassion from the fans. Like, like, would you take a pay cut or or be on a lower wage just to be able to experience that? You know what I mean? Like, how much of this I love Wrexham. Here's money? the thing: I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out here. I love Wrexham, but you are a delusional cunt because that is <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> You're telling me that Arthur Conquer, who was already umming and ahhing, yes, it was always Wrexham, but he was waiting for the right figure, by the way. So let's not sugarcoat that. <laughs> Second of all, he was waiting to see what else could be put on the table. Oh, who was he waiting for? A Premier League club to come and knock it. My point is, I love him and I think he will stay for us for many a year and it will happen. But we have to understand that money is money. And if he 20 mil comes knocking along and we can't even match a 20th of that, which is what you're saying, 75 a year, 75k a year, you'll be just a happy chappy to just stick around. I love you. I love Arthur Conquer. I love you, Rousey. That is the most delusional thing I've ever heard you say. But I like, I I like, I I like you for talking thinking. about footballers and footballers and money and all that sort of stuff. But look, I mean, my money, my <laughs> problems, right? Yep, exactly. And right. hey, it's a great problem to have. I'm glad we're even talking about it because we could be talking about how he's already out the door and he's at Norwich or some shit, just f plugging away. And all of a sudden, we're looking for a goalkeeper, but we're not. We've got one of the best, I if must, not must the best keeper very, in the league. I must have a very, very twisted view because I took a pay cut to go to a better job. So, you know, <laughs> uh, buddy, it's not atmosphere. 20 mil pay cut. You're not taking 20 mil. <laughs> <laughs> he's like I took three grand off my salary and he's like and then he's like but Arthur Conquo he'd do the same wouldn't he what a ledge 20 mil he'd take it no he wouldn't I love him but he wouldn't he wouldn't no one would <laughs> <laughs> but no honestly at the end of the day I think the best part about it now look I'm joking around I'm messing about but honestly like you said he did say it was home he did he could have gone anywhere. He could have. He had options. He did have options, but he saw a growth in Wrexham that he couldn't really get from any of the other League One clubs or Championship clubs that were looking at him. He was looking at something which was basically straight up directory. And he goes, if and, the, and I guarantee this is the way he's looking. He's still going to be in the limelight because he's at Wrexham. He's still going to get good money because he's at Wrexham. And he could have career progression in terms of going up the leagues because he's at Wrexham. At the end of the day, Wrexham was the best choice for him at this point in time. In three, four years, it might not be because maybe there are bigger clubs coming to knock in. It happens. Henrik Larsson left Celtic when he was at his peak then. They loved him. He said, he said Glasgow was his home. And then he left to go to Barcelona. Now, he did it, and he got a big farewell, and I hope that Arthur Oconquo does a similar thing, and I don't know why I'm comparing the two because right now that's a very big gap, but that's the hope that we have for players who stick around for this journey is they get the treatment where they get I think, I think testimonial you're matches and shit like Arthur, that. You're comparing him because Arthur is better. Then Henrik Larson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't even know Henrik Larson. When Arthur win. If, if, well, when when Arthur wins the Champions League, I will be I will sing his praises. Also, Henrik Larsson is a striker. So, <laughs> so, anyways, the point the the point is moot. The point is that people do say their clubs that are home. Kieran Tierney is another example at Celtic. I'm bringing up these ones because they're the ones who say it the most. It's their home. It's where they were born. He was in the stands as a kid, and he went to Arsenal. So it's it's these things that happen in football. But if Arthur can say it right now without being in the Wrexham system, without being only being on loan for a season, I'd tell you it's got to look good. It's got to look good for him and his and his prospects moving forward. Because he whatever happens right now, he wins. The club might not go up, the club might not succeed, but he wins out of this. And no but matter with, what. With, okay, so let's let's look at that. Let's look at that for a lot of, a lot of people and the, uh, we're talking about Wrexham's chances, maybe being mid table and all that sort of stuff. And that was obviously before we signed a Conquo because it was looking like a Conquo wasn't going to sign. Now all of a sudden he signed. Mm. Do our chances look a lot better now or, or what? I mean, they look, they look about the same because at the end of the day, it's the, it's the 
full team effort and one player, whether they're Ben Foster, Super Ben Foster and goal, we proved that didn't fix fix what was broken up at the back. So we do need to make some more signings. We do need to get the list right. But fuck me, does it make it better? You are right. It makes it a I mean, fuck ton look better. Look at it this way, right? The team that we've got on the field now, if that was no change from last year, you've got James McLean, Premier League, um, a lot of championship experience and international caps. You've got Paul Mullen, who's led the way in, in, in goals scored for God knows how long. And he's probably going to do the same next year. You've got Jack Merritt, who's a seasoned league one vet. You've got Stephen Fletcher, who is ex premier league as well. Um, yes, I know he's a little bit older, but all that, um, huh? Okay, maybe Oli Palmer we could probably argue for there as well, but he's more League 2 experience, I think. But then you've got George Evans, who's ex-championship. You've got... Um, who else have we got come down from the all championship experience in League 1? Uh, a lot of that team is championship League 1 experience. Yeah, already. we also got rid of a lot that was the at that League 2 League One standard that that had passed their time, like Luke Young, Bentoza, things like that. Mm. But we've also got young kids who are thriving and are probably going to hit their best form. Claire Worth comes to mind. Massive, massive. I mean, he had a massive year last year, but I just see something big from him this year. You've got people like Mendy who, you know, when he's on, he's on. He's just had games mm. which just unfortunately throws the barometer, but he he's another one that can make a big difference. I think it's all the all points to moot because you know we had the same conversation going into that first game against MK Dons. We got absolutely shown up, and then yes, it's a full season. Yes, there's however many games ahead. I think right now our, our chances do look good, and five, ten games even doesn't won't tell the story. And I think we may have to be patient again as we find our feet. Um, but I do, I do, as I said, I. I've joined the bandwagon of 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 hope that that it it will be a back to back, back to back to back promotions, um, whether it be through the autos or whether it be through the playoffs. I just have a feeling that this side has something more to give, but it's also to do with the signings that are made from not just us but from other clubs as well. So we'll see, we'll see, man. But like, this is the beauty of a podcast is we can say what we want and then get shown up in you know three months time that. It's just not possible or the opposite. We could be just blasting away, looking at an invincible season. Do you know what I mean? That's the beauty <laughs> of football. You just don't know what is going to happen. And I think that's what makes it so exciting. And I think we should be excited. Arthur Oconquo signed. So why not look ahead now? And now we can actually kind of concentrate and not speculate, but concentrate on the positions that do need filling because our starting 11 looks pretty good, but we definitely still need a bench considering we have a lot of competitions coming up. Speaking yeah. of competitions. And you know what? <laughs> I mean, I think it can be very easy for us Wrexham fan fans to have Wrexham tinted glasses. And we try and look at 100%. it from a logical uh, standpoint where we can. But I mean, there was a, it brings me back to a, no a comment that was on our last episode from Neb was taken. Shout out Neb was taken. He's not a Wrexham fan, but he actually took the time to listen to our podcast and he, he called our, he called our podcast decent. So, you know, shout out to Neb. That was or Neb better was than taken. shit. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, the, uh, he, he mentioned that, you know, how we think the idea that we're going to walk league one is going to be wild. Um, and that we need to temper our expectations. But to be fair with that, like, we don't think we're going to walk League One. We know it's going to be very tough. I just think our chances are very, very good. Anywhere above 10th is still a good finish. But, yep. you know, but thanks for the comment, Neb, was taken. Um, that was really, you know, actually made my day to read that. And, guys, I mean, if you want to ask us anything, you want to get in touch with us, by all means, comment down below reach out to us ask us anything we will respond and we'll probably even shout you out like we just did i mean um you know but yeah but i'm on the phone on. to one of them right now no <laughs> but like I, I mean i but i think the best part about what i was saying about leaks 
is we have, have many positions to fill, not just on the starting 11, I mean, which we have just named as one of our strongest in years, but also we have to understand that the bench and the players that help push them on the training track need filling. We have lost two fearless leaders in, in Ben Tozer and Luke Young and others as well. Like we have lost a little bit, but we've also gained people. But the reason that it is important is for things like this, which is the league that will be boycotted as normal, as normal it will be boycotted. But we have been drawn in North Group B of the Bristol Street Motors Trophy, where we will face none other than fucking Port Vale, Salford City, and one under-21 team to be named on Thursday, June 27th. Now, I don't know about you, mate, but that was the most underwhelming piece of shit that I've ever read when I saw that we were playing someone who we already played in the same comp last year and someone we played in the league last year. Just, just... Then if there was any other reason to boycott this, because a lot of people don't understand the boycott, the boycott is that the Premier League clubs, which is the, the yet to be named under 21 club, will be a Premier League club that is putting out their only their under 21s because they don't take the competition seriously. Yet they still want to grab money from its fans to go to the games and watch them play against them, which is bullshit. So we will, I'm sure everyone will continue to boycott, but also families who can't get tickets to other games. It is a good opportunity to go. Um, heck, if I was there and we were there at that time, I'm sure we would go. It's nothing to do with belittling anyone who wants to go, but there is just to understand the reason for a lot of people who don't want to go because of this whole under-21 Premier League club being shafted in. Like, well, who did we play last year? Newcastle, was it? Yeah, Newcastle. Was it Newcastle? Yeah. Ones, yeah. Yeah. Like it's, I think we had Mansfield... Um, and Port, Port Vale. Vale, and then us in yeah in last season's group. So well, now we got Salford instead, <laughs> and I don't know if that's an improvement um, in terms of I don't know. I was excited. I was like, oh, maybe we'll get something different. Um, but no. But we'll see how we go moving forward. It'll be a bit of fun. Aaron uh, from our fuckheads, shout out Aaron, uh, made a very funny comment in the Discord saying, "So we just got through the round. So we got through it." Because <laughs> he's like, "Well." But yeah, look, it, it will be an opportunity for us to play those those subs and play those people who maybe don't get the game time. You know, we saw how good Jordan Davies was against Mansfield in that same competition. Um, you know, w this is an opportunity to get more youth in for these kinds of things, but two, to get experienced heads that maybe aren't on the cusp of the starting 11, but can help push the players like a George Evans who right now is unrivaled in his position unless McLean was to walk in his position. <laughs> and um, at the moment, he's not going to do that. He's playing in his in his standard uh, winger position. But I digress. I'm excited about this. What I want to know about from you is, what's more disappointing? Port Vale or Salford? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Find out my answer. After the break. Woo! Oh, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it nailed. Yeah, it was pretty shit. <laughs> there you go. There's my opinion. I said you wanted my opinion. I made you guys I wait. said which one was more disappointing, and you just said, <laughs> just said it was shit. Pretty shit. It was pretty shit. <laughs> Good continuity. Yeah, gotta love that. Jesus. You know. No, but look, it was it was a hard one, man. Like I think look, I, I mean, I know there's a bit of a rivalry with Port Vale and I but I just I don't know. It it doesn't feel real. Do you get what I mean? Like it just doesn't feel like a real time for that to it's like when we play Mansfield there, like we know what not one fan took that as, oh, that means we're gonna smash them which I think we did, but like, it's not the point. It's like, you know, we're going to, we're not going to do that with them in the league. Cause I think we drew with them. Um, and it was a, it was an epic draw that one. And, but in that Whoa. competition, we stopped them. Adrian is on crack cocaine right now. Talking really, really quick. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. <laughs> I'll have a look here, but uh, we can start, start the segment. No, over no, if you no. Want. We just keep this going. We keep the train going. It's all good. We, I, I you sound funny when you're chipmunked out. So that's all good. Love it. Go with Love that. it. But no, I, look, I, I get it. I mean, the Bristol Street Motors Trophy is a very, you know, 
I can almost understand why the Premier League people, they, you know, get put their under-21 teams in, considering the amount of competitions they have. You got your big six, they go go to Europe, and then you got your bloody FA Cup trophy or FA Cup thing on top of that, and then you got the Bristol Street Motors trophy. There's so many different cups and competitions that they're playing mm. so many games. So I can understand that that one competition they need to obviously put their under twenty one side in. Um, so I do understand it from that point of view, but at the same time, they play less games than us, though. Yeah. Do they? Overall, they play like, thirty eight games. We and in the season we play what forty six. Yeah. Yeah. We get no. Is that we get only no international games, or is that actual? Um, that's just that? football league games. But we also play trophy games. We also play EFL trophy, so they don't play that. It it adds up that we play more. There was a really good point. Um, Mikel Arteta came out for Arsenal saying, you know, it's ridiculous how much they're having to play. Well, yes, you count Europe, but we also get an extra trophy in there ourselves. We've also got extra games. They get international breaks. We don't. So there is a big disparity between that. So as much as we can say, yeah, that is a good reason why, because they've got to go to Spain or whatever the fuck to play whoever. What about the other people outside the top six? Yeah, true. no reason for them to do it at all. Not so all about I, I get where, you, <laughs> yeah, I get where you're coming from, but I just yeah, Premier League have have got themselves in a bit of an ivory tower at the moment, and they're just looking down at the rest of them. That's why when the whole uh, FA Cup replay thing happened, what were the twenty teams that were asked? Mm. FA Cup, uh, uh, FA Cup uh, for, for the FA Cup. It was for for the Premier League teams that were asked the twenty. You know, however many asked, do you want that to abolish that? Yeah, who cares? Because it doesn't affect them. Who cares? But that match revenue is what makes the club. I'm going on a rant here because I've harbored <laughs> a lot against the Premier League here, so I'll leave it at that. But just that's why I want to play in the championship and just stay there. <laughs> One day we will be in the Premier League, my friends. One day. But uh, I, think, I think, you know, there was so much news last week and it, it, moving on from – from obviously the Arthur Conquo and all that. Stephen Fletcher decided he wants to sign for another year. Do you see him having much of a big uh, big role to play? Is he going to stay as a super sub? Are we going to keep the same attacking style and attacking lineup? Or does... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's he will be the super sub at, on the bench. And it's only either there'll be games where people need rested, spe specifically Oli Palmer. You know what? Probably. I, actually, I kind of think we're going to stick with that same lineup. And see how it goes. Obviously, swapping out here and there, and then maybe, maybe come the January window, then we'll restock. Maybe. It's a good point. I mean, it's better than trying out something when you don't know if it needs fixing. That's why they're always. That's why the January window is always helpful to us. So, mm. yeah, I, I don't see why that that that's a really good point. Why don't I mean, we just we, stick we with what we've got? We do have till was it October or early November when the window closes? Is it like, I think it's October thirty thirty first. Am I or is that just Halloween? Yeah. Fuck, I can't remember. So there's even still time then. So you know, there's there's no panic stations anymore. We got a we got a golden keeper. We got a solid front um, front four attacking lineup. We got players in the team with championship and Premier League experience. I'm not worried. I reckon that team nah. can actually do it. But I, at the same time, I do understand the other point of view that people are being like, no, we need to get some quality signings. We've got a quality fucking team. I reckon they can no, but do I, it. But. but I think also that a, that starting 11 does not win a, win, a, win a title. Like you can't just go off of that starting 11. You need a bench who's going to support when injuries inevitably happen, when people get injured. You know, no one predicted Paul Mullen being out and Elliot Lee took up the reins and helped out. You know, we were lucky, you know, that that worked out, but that was in League 2. League 1, that's probably not going to fly. You know, you, you get an injury. George Evans, a great example. Right now, if he gets injured, the only player who's of the caliber 
stopper that can replace him is James McLean. And then that's taking him out of his normal positioning. That's literally moving him across. And then Mendy would then get to start in that position, which, you know, might work for some games, but you need someone to push George. You need someone to push. And Mm. I'll be honest, the, those centre backs need replacing. Like we need not replacing. We need more centre backs to back it up. We've lost Aaron. Uh, sorry, Aaron Hayne, Ben Toza, uh, and and also you know you've got an Aaron Hayden as well. In the sense that I know he didn't play much last year, but you know again it is that kind of person that's on the bench pushing for a spot because if you don't have someone nipping at your heels fighting for your position, then you can get complacent. You can just kind of phone it in. And I know that Parky won't let that happen. I know. But you've got, you know, you and I have both watched enough football to know over the years that there will be times where if someone's not being tested, sometimes they get complacent and then they become bang average. And I'm not saying that'll happen, but I just disappeared. There I am. And, you know, so you it, it, it'll be lot. one of those good things. You do, you do, do that, that a lot. A lot. I don't know why. For shits why. and giggles. I mean, I can go right back. I can go forward. I can tug one out. It's because I'm bald. I don't disappear. It's just the 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 phone. The, the, phone, the camera has no idea what to do with my bald noggin. That's why I'm wearing a hat today to hopefully keep it in check. But it just disappeared. So, but if you're watching the YouTube, you know, enjoy not having me on the screen the whole time. And uh, for those of us listening, I'm sorry that this is a weird, weird segment. Um, <laughs> but I did want to ask you. Speaking of the defensive uh, lineup, so we talked about Clareworth. We talk about you know a Connell. Clueth, Clueth, hey Clueth, Clueth, yeah, like Clue, Clueth, Worth, Clueth, Clueth, Australia, <laughs> speak Australian. Uh no, Cle- no, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so no, honestly, but we've got players like that, O'Connell. I'm going to call him Clearworth, Clueth. Uh we've got that's like name name another person who can come into that side if one of those guys get injured. O'Connor, maybe. Even Fletcher. In the back line? Are you, are you high? <laughs> do, you, do you know which throw, position throw Stephen Mullen Fletcher plays? Throw Mullen back there. Jesus H. Dick. This is why we need signings. <laughs> and I get where you're coming from because you're like, I'm excited. The starting 11's great. But it's all good and well until someone pulls a hammy, twists an ankle, or is in shit form. And all of a sudden, we have no one to patch it up. We saw what happened when our back four specifically, well, it wasn't back four, was it? It was fucking back five at one point. <laughs> but the the back line suffered and we had no one to replace because we had no Aaron Hayden because he was injured. Ben Toes was um, going through what he was going through, which again, no one's blaming him for or anything like that. Going through a shit run of form because of his you know, personal life. And then- You've got kids who are having to step up and they're just not ready for the occasion. We need people up that up that up the up the back. <laughs> we need people up up the up rear the end. Rear. Up the rear. Oh Jesus hate. Right um rear. my up, point up, is no, that I don't like to speculate and I don't know any names out there. But if if I was if I was a, a betting man, that would be the next signing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So well, you look, I think yeah, it was great. We had a spot of news every single day. And then obviously in true club fashion, they like to fuck things around with that. Whatever the fuck that news update was on the first one about the cop. I mean, geez. The cop, you know, Rousey oh, messaged me. put an extra and- 700 seats in the cop. Yeah, great. Cool. <laughs> Rousey know, messages but- me at what time of night? Fucking, I want to say it was 1 a.m. And somehow I was up. And I think I was just lying in bed and my phone went off and I've got notifications turned on when Rex and post. So my phone buzzed saying Rex and posted something and I was like, holy shit. Oh, it's happening. And I read it. Just severe disappointment when I read that. And I just was so mad. I'm like, I'm not talking to anyone about this. I was putting my phone down. And then I get a message from Rousey a minute later going, do you see that bullshit? Did you see that article? And I was like, I did it. And I'm like, and I feel, I feel worse off for it. And he's like, and he's like, and he just goes, just wanted to let you know. And I was like, all right, good night. <laughs> that, that's the kind of, that's the kind of breaking news that is just what we were clamoring for. But look, I mean, good on him for updating us, but 
I was expecting a lot more from that update. <laughs> Oh yeah, that just started an absolute comedy of 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 tirade of comments in our fuckheads chat. It was so funny. I mean, mm. to have like an update, it was like an an update about a non update. I mean, the only thing different that they were saying is that they're going to put three thousand seats in in the temporary stand and have it for the remainder of the season until they can get the cop sorted. Basically, they're going back to the drawing board, right? So what they originally had, even though that looked sexy, they thought, well, no, we've got a plan for the future. I think they're going to try and close off the corners or some shit and um, make it into something really big and that they can expand on and make the, the stadium, the, the race course bigger. So that's good, but it's not really news. <laughs> it was just like just I'm disappointment, like, mate. Uh, it was yeah. just and disappointment. Then, then it followed it up the next day with Aaron James obviously signing as well. So I think that's interesting. Um, we don't really see a lot of him. Um, yeah, I did see that shit. That I that's how, I'm not, no no disrespect to to Aaron at all, but that just like went over my head. Like I I saw it. I comprehended it when you said it. It just reminded me, and I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, that was a bit of news. Like, so, look, good on him. I think the good thing is the club knows what's happening behind closed doors better than anyone, obviously. You know, having Mark Howard, Chomp getting that one year, Stephen Fletcher getting that one year, you know, these are things that they're consolidating to ensure that they are ready. So, even if we don't bring in as much as we want to bring in in, in terms of stocks uh, for, for, you know, backup positions or even just fighting for starting 11 you know at least we can kind of fight because we've still got those guys there so pretty pretty happy with that i don't know how um oh, maybe i do but what, what's his name liam who went to the uh to the uh what do you call it this what the fuck did they call it tst you remember that <laughs> you know, a couple of weeks back, that thing, TST, the fucking oh, whatever. Luke, Luke McNichols, you're talking about the goalkeeper. Is it is it Luke or is it Liam McNichols? See, that's okay. this is this is just the kind of journalism or kind of reporting from some top fucking end echelon. Just I hate mm. myself for not knowing. Anyways, the point is, I if I'm Luke. like if I'm a kid in the side who's just seen, uh, um, uh fucking chomp sign on are you like ah damn kind of hope hoped i'd be the backup and i'd be you know playing those cup games do you think that he still they still play him for the trophy uh for the for the um, um bristol so motors I mean, he's, he's he made clear his intentions of being the number one goalkeeper at wrexham um obviously you know he's got to bide his time he's got to learn his 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 trade. So obviously he's going to be learning from, from, um, old chomp, old chomp. Yeah. And I mean, there's uh, no one, to, no one better to learn off, to be honest, especially yeah. in our league, like name a, name a, <laughs> name a league one side or like, or anyone below that's got that caliber of, of, of goalkeeper just sitting in the wings, not playing every week who can give you, I can feedback when you're playing in the in the development league. You know, it's mm. not. It's a very. It's probably a good position to be in. So, look, I guess you're right. I, you got to look on the the bright side of it all. Is that yeah? If he buys his time, Chomp will probably. I said last year, Arthur, be last if year. If but, Arthur Conquo stays, I highly doubt he'll ever be a number one keeper for us. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm not saying he will be, but I'm I'm more just saying like he'll get more game time and he'll be that backup because you know we saw what happened when you know people got injured when. When uh, when Chomp got uh, fucking Langton got injured every full moon, um, like you know he got injured and we'd be like, well shit, and then you'd bring in Chomp, great, awesome, and then when he was gone, then we were like, oh actually we need another keeper, and again he's just there waiting in the wings to be to be a helpful backup. I still I still hope the young boy gets an, a go, gets a run, but I don't think it'll be in any of the, any of like the FA cup or anything. It'll be just the Bristol motors and the developmental league. I, I just don't see him 
in that lineup as long as Chomp's still fit and uh, obviously AO's starting. So, yeah, anyways, that that's just an interesting one that I thought of. I'm like, if I'm a kid who was hoping when they signed that he would, Chomp would kind of just fade off into the distance and <laughs> then he didn't, it's like, oh. Uh, hey, <laughs> but, our new CEO made an appearance. I must say, I'm digging the vibe and getting off him. You're giving off a good vibe. Uh, you know, he's, he, if you look at the... Um, the access all areas for when um, Arthur Conquo signed on his first day. And um, you had obviously Arthur Conquo obviously standing outside of the change room saying hello to a lovely legend of a man, Phil Parkinson. And he introduced him to the new CEO. And there was that whole exchange between him and the CEO and, and obviously Rob McElhenney got on the phone. I just, I don't know. I'm just digging the vibe. I'm digging the vibe from this guy. I just can't believe you're giving blow by blows of people meeting each other as well. It's just, it's, it's honestly the content I'm here for. So I think you've nailed it. Like he, to get the vibe of the CEO, I'm like, how are we supposed to feel the vibe Rouse? But you've just put me in the, in the room with them. You're just, just a storyteller. I'm friend. digging the vibe from the guy, right? I mean, he's he's he seems <laughs> like he's he's friendly, personable. He seems like he's he's got his head screwed on, and he's got a close relationship with Rob McElhenney. Um, yeah, I'm I'm just digging the vibe I'm getting from the guy, man. You know, it's all about the vibe. I don't know about you, but I miss all Fleur. about um, the vibe. <laughs> I just miss Fleur. I'm sorry. <laughs> you I don't know about you, but Fleur. you miss Fleur. Holy shit! Okay, no, because you want to know it. why. I wanted, I wanted it. to rip a, I wanted to rip a flare when we went to Wrexham. I wanted to rip one, and then just go to like Fleur and be like, woohoo! Like, and then they, and then they escort me out the country. That was, that was the aim. You wanted to fart in her general direction with a flare. Oh, with a flare. Oh. What do you think I said a fart? <laughs> yeah, you said you wanted to rip one. That's like Australian for fart. So rip like a you flare. wanted to go fart in the face or something. <laughs> Fuck. Fleur, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. We do have the utmost respect for you. And the only the only jibe I was trying to make was about the flares. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to an ad break. We'll wrap things up of the Two Beards podcast after this. Let's go. Woo okay, we are back. That is it for another week. But uh, I, I do, I do got to ask you something, Adrian. Just as we close out, this, this is like a little shit chat question. What do you think of the Daily Mail? Trash, horse shit, fucking atrocious. Well, what what do you think about this news that Birmingham City has asked to play their match against us in the USA? Tom Brady, I blame him. So let me just read this. Bust. Birmingham City have asked for permission to play their forthcoming League One fixture with Wrexham in the United States. Male sport can reveal. The club's American bosses raised the prospect of taking the visit of the Hollywood-owned North Wales side across the Atlantic in the forthcoming season, but the notion was swiftly declined by EFL bosses. Good. Good. I'm glad. Good. Fucking good. You get there are pre-season matches. I see what they're doing with the baseball going to London, the gridiron going to London and all that shit. I get it. I get that they're trying to make it universal. Football's already a universal game with leagues in different in different countries. Baseball, like, yeah, okay, maybe there's a handful of countries that, that have leagues in it, like Japan and, and Korea and stuff. But let's talk about gridiron for a second. There's literally one country that plays it, although Starkey apparently, did shout out. Apparently, we've got a, a fucking a team as well. What the yep. fuck is that about? Thanks, Starkey, <laughs> tagging us in, get in Japan, destroying us fifty to six or something in the gridiron. But we digress. The reason it is 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 that they've brought it across is because it's a game that is not readily available in other countries. 
Do you get what I'm saying? Whereas mm. football, they have the MLS. It's readily available. As much as I would love to see a League One game, any EFL game on Australian soil, that's the dumbest thing I've heard. There is no reason for their game to be exported. The only reason they're exported is to put more eyes on that game and league, e.g. Major League Baseball getting it around because it's something that the the UK market has not embraced is baseball. So why not get them around it? Same with Gridiron. Get them around it to get, again, eyes on them and their that league. We don't need the world game to be put on the world stage. We already have the World Cup. We already have club competitions at local level, MLS, A-League, shit like that. It's not needed. It really isn't. And I get I get why they're doing it because they're trying to capitalize on the market and get more fans for Birmingham and get more fans for Wrexham. But Wrexham don't need it straight up. They've got a successful doco. They've got a side that's owned by two of the most charismatic fucking Hollywood people ever. They're going to be fine. Birmingham, what, on the other what, hand, what, have Tom what Brady. You're trying to, what you're trying to say, Adrian, and I'll, I'll just, I'll put it in the most blunt, rousy way possible. Back in your box, Tom Great Brady. Yep. Get back Jay, in your Tom, box. <laughs> back in your box and deflate those balls, mate. Just keep <laughs> deflating those balls. Uh, but point is that I, that's just horseshit. But also, for those who don't know, and I'm not going to do the rant here, but if you don't know why the Daily Mail shit, have a look it up why it's shit. It's one of the worst providers because of so many mis uh, reporting and awful blights against against human lives. Um, that's all I'm going to go on it. But just if you ha- if you don't know about it and you're reading the Daily Mail, going what's wrong with it? Educate yourself. Go do a little cheeky little Google search and find out why the Daily Mail is is actually the plague. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, mate, I think we better wrap this up. We've had a very good podcast this week. I think we've managed Have to we? find something to talk about. Um, so I think <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I feel like I was angry week. this week. <laughs> what? You I feel like I was angry a lot this week. Like every segment, I had something to fucking pull apart. <laughs> Ah, oh, the Premier League, dicks, Tom Brady, dick, like, you know, like just everything was angry. So, <laughs> you've got anyway. Uh, so, Adrian is now going to be grumpy. Adrian, we'll we'll refer to him as grumpy. Adrian, that's me. Yeah, he, he's he's he. Yeah, we'll just and I'll I'll do what I can every single week to piss him off. Believe me, I try. He, he's, you know what? Like, I think it's don't, don't know if you it's start. The same. Don't you? If this start. has been a, this has been a year together, I feel, and I, we're almost <laughs> coming up to a full year together, and I feel like I am now not immune, but I feel like I get you now. I understand um, you. You understand. We're me. one, Rousey. All right. I'm inside of you, Rousey. Okay. Are we going to share a bed and wreck some? We're we going to have some yeah, right. cuddles. Will you be yep. my big spoon? <laughs> yeah. Always. <laughs> Jesus right. Christ. This is why no one listens to us. No, <laughs> I'll get to fart on your leg and rumble your balls with my fart. <laughs> there it is. And that is the content. That, that is why we're just... That's when you know it's time Anywho. to sign off. So, guys, links in the description down below for our fuckhead program. We love you. We want you to join. Oh, you get all that extra Again. sort of stuff. So there's a link tree that will get you to our website. It'll get you to our Patreon. Get you to all that sort of stuff. It, it's great. So guys, visit that. Like, comment, share, and just, yeah, let us know what you think. Reach out to us. We like to engage with our fans. So, and uh, you never know, we might talk about you on next week's podcast. But that's it for this week. Beard brethren. Sheilers, fuckheads, and just all around legends. We love you. Two beards, Rex and Podcast, signing out. Bye. See ya.